All right, the last video I just put up a few days ago was the most important thing that a protection dog needs, the skill. This is the most important exercise in the whole protection training game. And I just heard from somebody a few days ago, <laughs> and they were saying how impressive it is that dogs fly and hit and police dogs and all that. So I want to emphasize this because every we all love those flying hits, right? That's, oh shit! Oh, oh. oh damn! <laughs> me included but because I do this for a living I know that it's a minimal skill right if you have a good dog and good genes done a little prep work the flying takeoffs are an elementary skill right they're low level that's easy and doesn't take much skill to send a dog and do flying hits right with a good dog the most important thing in the art of dog training and a high level protection dog with skills is to stop them from that takeoff unless told to do it but this is the art of protection dog training holding back that energy and that passion to bite right I mean Axel he's got <laughs> crazy drive he is insane when it comes to toys or bite work all that right it's exactly what we wanted when we bought him so harnessing that and making him hold himself back is not an easy thing to do learn control and steadiness and hold all those emotions back hold that drive hold that desire that passion right he's got to keep a hold on that throttle that is where the art comes in not the takeoffs you see it all the time people just hold them right there's no skill to that great to look at love the hits love but that there's no real skill in that <laughs> right sometimes we have to teach a dog to target there properly that takes some art right but the whole thing of that with no control and descent really doesn't take much skill at all so holding that energy holding the leg while staying in protection he's got to do several things at the same time while he's in drive go come on come on give me the bite right so here I started our first day I was showing how to get him to start wanting to hold there for his favorite toy the ball The next session was with the ball while I move slowly back and forth and close to the ball to put pressure on him. To make him, we go float away from it. He stays with my body while staying in drive. 
if we get close to the ball, which is even harder, because now it's right in front of his face. Now he's got to hold back when it's right there. <laughs> right. Ah! This is total control over mind, energy, desire, passion, right? Keeping things safe, reliable, and a dog who's fluent in his game, right? When a dog starts breaking off and going biting without cause and people got to hold him on a leash and do all this, that's not a protection dog, right? People think, I understand that people in the public don't know better and they don't really know what a real protection dog is. But when you see a dog flying on a leash like this, rah, 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 and then they go bite a suit, that's not protection. That's crazy, out of control chaos, right? There is no protection to that. It's just teaching the art, biting, getting the drive of the game. It's a beginner step, right? Baby step. That's the very beginning step. It's still not protection work yet, it's pre protection and getting drive going, getting the understanding of the game, right? But the real protection game starts at this. This is where the, that art comes in. Can you harness him? Can you keep him in control? But you have to balance drives at the same time. While you're making him hold this, you don't kill his drive. Too much pressure. Timing's bad of decoy or ball being given. There's so many elements that go into this to keep everything right. So then we move it to the decoy, the aggressor. From ball to decoy, can he channel it? You see, today, from doing the ball exercise, I can move around a little bit and start moving my feet, and he's starting to flow in there and follow a little bit backwards. So I'm just playing a little bit, nothing excessive to make sure that he stays under control and to be able to teach him the game and hold that energy until Stacy makes that charge. Ah! <laughs> 
Of course, at some point, I'm going to start throwing one in and sending him just so he knows that it, he can do it if we ask for it. So yes, yeah, so a lot of people will say, no, but if he's here, this and that, of course. So we want to make sure all bases are covered. We hold him in because most likely in life, you're not going to have to send him, right? We want to make sure the threat is there. And again, talking about sport dogs to real protection dogs, the talking and the spitting, you see, we need to scare people in real life. Sport dogs generally stay quiet, right? And then they're sent on a bite when they're quiet. Counter reality, right? So this is a threat we're trying to hold. If we don't have a leash on them, we have total control, okay? And then you gotta be crazy to approach him when he's barking at you like that with spit flying in those teeth. You gotta be crazy. Now, if we needed it and we had to cut that thread off, we will be able to send him and have him bite when he's told when he goes. Now is not the time. That's after we have all control done. Not in the beginning, because then you're gonna have a dog who flies and flies and then it's very difficult to hold them back. So, I'm gonna have a whole series on this soon. Been filming little by little by little when I get a chance to actually put this into an instructional video. So, also, today we used a brand new bite suit I have. Thicker than my old one, <laughs> but Stacy's still getting punished. So today we decided to change jackets and go to the new one because every day his bite has gotten harder and harder and Stacy can't take it anymore. In the sleeve we started, she couldn't take it anymore. Then in the suit jacket, that was too much now, it was too painful. Today was our first with this jacket, and this thing's got a lot of puff, right? And she still was feeling that pain. So I'll do another video after this about how we're building his bite power to make those hard striking bites that Stacy really, right now, doesn't want to take those hits. It's, it's hurting, it's really hurting. So the first few days we did it with him, she really didn't feel him because when we got him, his bite was not that good. I had to develop that. So next video, I'll talk about how I've been doing that and why his bite power has been increasing on a daily basis. So until next time, Miami Dog Whisperer.